everybody, welcome to the first interview of the series. I am with John Gregson here, who is a very fine uh, professional guitar player here in London's West End, and he's playing on the show Prince of Egypt. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, Tim. Um, now, we've been covering the subject of doubling, and this show is a perfect example of doubling instruments. John is playing nylon string guitar, he's also got 12 string steel string, and we've also got, explain these two over here. Right, yes. Okay, so we've got guitar corner here, all the sensible stuff, and as we move to my right, we have a Greek bazooki with a very perilous bowl back. Um, John, why don't you explain how this is tuned, actually? Right, well, um, the, the Greek bazooki is tuned uh, ordinarily in, uh, it's, it's tuned C, uh, C, F, A, D, which um, is, can, can be thought of as Chicago tuning, but down a tone, right? Um, which you described in your, in your last video. Um, for this show, we decided against using Chicago tuning, mm -hmm. <laughs> using Greek bazooki tuning. Um, and we've actually gone with Irish bazooki tuning, okay. uh, just, to, just to delineate it a bit more from the, the uh, steel string acoustic. Yeah. Um, but one of the lovely things about a Greek bazooki is that, uh, in addition to the unison pair strings on the top, uh, you also have octave pairs on the lower two. Uh, so it's, all, it's purely fifths, like a yeah. mandolin tuning. Mm -hmm. G, D, A, E. So of course that is the... That is the mandolin tuning, although it's an octave lower than a mandolin. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So and, um, as, as you can see, I mean, the scale length is off the chart, really, with... Uh, quite long. Yes. And, um, and, with, and with the bowl back as well, you end up... You want to use mandolin fingering for everything, yeah. where everything's nice and compact mm -hmm. and the, the fifths make sense. Yeah. Uh, so for this, it's a bit more of a mission and to play it without it slipping off your knee. But yeah, sure. it's a beautiful sounding instrument. And then with the... Uh, with with the octaves as well, you can get a really really rich sound sound outfit. Uh -huh. and, um, and in this show, it's providing a sort of double duty for uh, a rhythmic uh, a rhythmic thing like an Irish bazooki would, as well as a lead a lead line yeah. playing very melodic. Lot yeah. of things. Well, I'll just say um, I've just watched John play the show. Uh, this is the matinee. Uh, we've just well, I've just watched the matinee. And uh, John did a fantastic job of playing these instruments. Um, let's move on to the next yeah. one, which is the oud. Now, this was the one that really freaked me out. <laughs> you'll, you'll, need to, you'll need to explain a lot about this one. So I'll give right. you some, some close-up shots of this as well. Well, I, I, should, I should clarify at first that this is a, a Godin multi-oud. Um, and this is a, a, modern, uh, a modern interpretation of, uh, of the classic oud. Now, the oud is one of the earliest uh, string instruments, really. Um, sort of ancestor of a lute and, and so on, but as, as you can see, it doesn't have any frets, uh, <laughs> which is the first hurdle. Um, again, Very shiny. yes, yeah. um, a normal a normal oud would be um, would have a bowl back as well. Um, and I, I have a beautiful Turkish uh, oud that we use to record the the album for this show. Um, and it's fantastic, but unfortunately, it's designed for a very precise uh, ecosystem. And a West End theatre <laughs> is not a precise ecosystem. No, no, exactly. It's especially not at this time of year. No, we, we, uh, have, okay. um, we have drafts, we have flame, we have a whole bunch of different uh, heat, heat going on. And uh, with the Turkish in here, you put it down for a second and the tuning would slip. And you just, you just don't have time in one of these shows to do any, to do any adjusting. Um, so thankfully, we compromised with the Godan, which is fantastic. It's got it's got a couple of condenser mics yep. in it and, and a, a nice um, Fishman pickup system in it as well. Yeah. Um, and it just it allows a bit more, uh, it gives the sound sound team a lot more options. Okay. Because it's quite a quiet instrument. So. Right. Yeah. Should we talk about the yeah. tuning? Of yes. This one? Yeah. Yeah. So um, so I'm using Arabic tuning. Yeah. Uh, on this, uh, as as befits the show, um, which is low to high, um, C F A. D G C. That, um, and it's not quite as alien as it as you might 
initially think, because it's all fourths with a rogue major third in there, which might remind us of our instrument. It does somewhat, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. So uh -huh. it's almost like you've taken two partials of a, of a six-string guitar and just gone like that. With yeah, OK, so, yeah, I'm with you, yeah. Um, and you, you pick it with this plucky little fellow, which is a Risha. Uh, it's like a nail file, a plastic <laughs> nail file. Is, yes, um, with a tremendous amount of flex to it. Yeah. And um, in a way, it's useless as a nail file and as a pick. But um, <laughs> it's, it's like writing with a rubber pencil. Yeah. Really. Okay. Yeah. Um, so on, on, one of, on one of these, you've got eleven strings. Yeah. Um, so five pairs and mm. one uh, one solo string, and so you're trying to hit it with this with this reacher. And it's really important. We, we you could use a guitar pick. Yes. But a guitar pick will compress the dynamics of a nylon string. Same with playing it on the classical. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and the, um, our music team really wanted the. Uh, the sonorous and the rhythmic nature of an oud to come out in this. So, okay. so, so give us a quick demo. Yeah, of the so you, you get here. this sort of nice little slap um, with, on the body. Which I mean, I noticed watching the show there that um, it was pretty much all downstrokes. Because yes. to, in order to get that sound. Um, and actually, I noticed even when you were playing the stuff on the 12 string, there was a lot of downstrokes, there wasn't much upstrokes, it was yeah. all sort of trying to go for the same kind of tonality. Yes, with, the, with those, um, with the downstrokes on a, um, with this gravity as our friend, generally, mm. and um, as long as, as long as the speed of the piece allows it, especially on a 12-string, on a yeah. getting the octaves to ring out is very important, so where you, you know, how you pick is really yeah, important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not a, you put down your electric and play one of these exactly the same way. You do yeah, have sure. to slightly readjust how you do things, just to keep the integrity of the instrument. Um, and and in, in, that, in that vein, I think it would be tempting to treat a fretless instrument like this a bit like your first slide. Yep. Um, we, we, were, we were talking before the show yes. about that. Of You get the slide immediately, you go <laughs> and you want to make, it's the most obvious thing in the world that you suddenly have no frets holding you back. Uh, yeah. But the novelty factor sort of drags you into areas that are possibly a little bit inappropriate. Well, well occasionally I also have to intonate with a string section of who course. can play a fretless uh, yes, instrument. With, indeed. So a lot of the skill is in being able to play scales without it sounding like you're fretless as well and, and, yep. getting, and getting a nice tone as, as well um, out of it because you're very aware that this is very different from a from a guitar. Yeah. Um, on this on this show, we don't have to do any chordal things. Yeah. Uh, on the oud, it's a purely melodic or uh, riff <laughs> riff device for this. Yes. In fact, it sounded you know, there was a riff that you were playing um, that almost sounded like you were trying to, you were kind of playing a twelve bar blues. Yes. Which, yeah. That's which the... made me laugh to myself yes. actually. In this very in this strangely Arabic setting, I, yeah. I heard the, the the move to the four chord and the five chord where I expected it, and you were, you were playing this low. Almost, it was a riff that I could imagine being played by some heavy, distorted guitars, almost. Yes, in my mind. In your in my mind, mind, every acoustic gig I do is played <laughs> on a seven-string guitar. <laughs> um, yes, I, I know the riff you're talking about. Dude. That was the one, yeah. That's using the maximum slap. Of yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, nice challenge to have. Uh, for this, yeah. it, at the speed at which we have to change instruments, it is a bit of a mental shift. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, you definitely don't see one of these every day in a in a theatre no. theatre show. So I'm, I'm quite quite um, proud to be <laughs> the 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 torchbearer for this. Yeah, well, you, you you did a great so. job. So I was very impressed. Oh, thank you. Okay, so um, close up on the twelve string here, which is a fairly familiar instrument to most guitar players, but. As those of us who have played 12 string know, it can be a bit of a beast in its own way, can't it? Absolutely, my tendons are screaming daily. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, you, you really have to be aware of your, your fretting with yeah. one of these. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, that odd, it's that odd sensation of you know that suddenly a bar chord becomes, if you feel like a beginner again trying, trying bar chords for the first time, because sure. the slightest uh, wrong movement, and then you lose half the strings. Yeah, okay. Um, for it, it sounds very weak. Um, but then also, in addition to the extra pressure you have to put on the strings, you have to be aware not to put too much on, yeah. so that, you know, I'm playing this show eight times a week. Mm. Um, Tendonitis is central. Yeah, you've got to, got, to be careful, and you've got to be really careful with your posture as well. Yeah. And, and then at the end of the day, it's all about making music with it, mm. so hopefully it sounds good, rather yeah. than it just being 
a physical feat of endurance and me just <laughs> screaming. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, yeah. Um, you know it, it, can't, it can't all be you know, stairway to heaven. Or, well, or no, those, exactly. I mean, one day, one day. Just, we'll, there's quite a lot of strummy stuff, isn't there? And there's also there's also some single note stuff. There, there are a lot of yeah. There's a surprising. In, in one of the big flagship number in this, there's a lot of a um, uh, lot of intricate uh, arpeggio stuff as well, and some and some sixths, which yes. becomes, so there's actually some hybrid picking involved. Yes, in this, you told me is, about this when I spoke on the phone to you about this, and yeah. so when it came up, I went, "Oh, this will be the bit John was talking about." This is where John talks about how his nails keep on threatening to die. Yes, this, exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I mean, you you get the 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 standard sort of. Uh, <laughs> Those really, all those really pretty, yeah, pretty bits. Of course, there are bits that are then in A flat. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's really, yes, I remember that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, just holding on a chord, uh, you know, an A flat chord like that on a twelve string for over a couple of bars of sl at a slow tempo it can be can take its toll, can't it? <laughs> it really can. Yeah, it really can. You suddenly. That's the time when you really don't want a guitar solo. So fine, fine. I need yeah. a, bit more, a bit more musical ballast around me, please. Indeed, indeed. Um, right. Okay, that's great. Um, and I suppose we just swap over quickly to the yeah. classical, which, um, again, um, it's a six-string guitar tuned like a regular guitar. Yes. But almost cheating at this point. It, it does feel like almost cheating because um, it's easier on the hands, and you're back into the realms of uh, fairly territory that is familiar. Yes. But nylon strings need treating in their own special way, don't they? Yes, so I'm, uh, I'm not playing this with a pick. Um, I'm, I'm treating this very much as a, as a, classical, yep. as a classical instrument. Uh, despite the cutaway. <laughs> despite the cutaway. Shh. <laughs> Almost getting away with this. And the pickup um, system. Yes, which well, is not being not, used not, in this, which is using mics, aren't we? Yeah, yeah just, just, using, just using a mic for this. Um, the cutaway actually isn't needed on this. No. I, I could, I could guess I get by without it. Sure. But um, this is a... Uh, the reason I'm using this rather than my, my main classical is just this is so dependable under different... Well, I have to key, say, key having positions. played this very guitar... Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, ...doing a show for you, I know what it plays like. It's a very nice instrument. It is a very nice... A, a very nice Alhambra, which is... Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's... I mean, as, as with all this classical stuff, it's just taking care of your nails and making sure that all the... You, you allow the full range of the instrument to really sing out, really, because there's um, there are lots of very delicate. Uh Those sorts of folky, yeah, uh, elegiac sure. um, passages, and then the whole sorts of. Um where they. It's, you're really thinking, thinking of uh, film themes, and uh, yeah. it's really singing, singing guitar. It's, it's epic movie stuff. <laughs> it, it really is, as yeah. befits an epic movie. Exactly. This being as this is a stage version of an epic movie. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. So yeah, John, please take us through what's going on with the mics here and this switching system down here. Certainly. Okay. So we, we have these um, two mics here. Um, one, one is for all the, the guitars and one is for the oud. Um, we're taking a direct out of the oud as well because it's got some nice mics in it, uh, but this is mainly to catch the um, percussiveness on, on the oud's body when you, when you slap it with the, with the risha. Right, okay. yeah. And then this, this mic here is doing all the guitars and the bazooki. Right, um, okay. Down here we've got this wonderful device. Yes, yeah, so this, is, um, uh, this was made for the show um, by our wonderful sound team. And it's, it's purely, it's, you know, because every guitarist needs a pedal board, even on an acoustic show. <laughs> um, and Where's and the boutique drive pedal? Yeah, yes, absolutely. It's in a rack backstage. Yeah, um, yeah everyone needs to sew right when they're playing. And, um, <laughs> so the, uh, and so this, this swaps between, uh, between all the different ones, and then I can, I can mute. And all that's, all that's allowing is it allows the, the different gain stages between the instruments, because the oud is going to be quieter yeah, okay. than the bazooki, which is going to be quieter than uh, the 12 string, which is going to be quieter than the nine string, or yeah. wh how, however. You know, and then it allows them a bit more freedom on the desk to, to do some, um, you know, to process the sound as, as much as they yeah. can sort of post fade. Okay. Um, but it is a whole extra level of tap dancing 
which you didn't expect to have on an acoustic gig. Which the, the, a lot of the changes are really fast. Yeah. And so it is. Uh, if you're still thinking of the notes by the time you're changing instrument, you've probably already lost the battle. You've got yes, to be. Yes, I, I think uh, there's a lot of us who've experienced that yes. that battle in it, it, you know, in itself in many sort of pit situations. Okay, so um, we've looked at the gear, and we've talked about the kind of stuff that you have to play on the instruments. Um, I just wondered if you could tell me about the process between getting booked for the gig and being here. Because you, you had a, an album to make as well, did a cast album during yes. the rehearsals, is that correct? Yes. Right, yes, so, so tell, me, tell me how, <laughs> so you got the gig, um, were you, initially were you, were you basically called up or were, were there any kind of auditions involved in this show? Uh, there weren't any auditions, um, I, I'm not sure about that entire, <laughs> entire process for it, this. But uh, it, ca it came your way? It came my way. Yeah. Uh, and you, you were happy to rise to the challenge? Uh, yes. Uh, Excellent. I, I reluctantly accept this glamorous gig. But, well done. Um, the, at, at the point that they called and uh, asked me if I played all these instruments, mm -hmm. and I play them and I cherish them, and uh, w am, I, am I free this year? Mm -hmm. And I was. And, um, and it's been really nice because I've, and I've, been, I've been freelancing for s such a long time as well. Mm -hmm. It's it actually uh, nice to be... At, at that stage of my career, it's like, oh, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. It's nice to actually have a chance yeah. to sort of sit down somewhere and yeah. really focus on one gig. Yeah. Um, and so you know, they called and had lots of, lots of conversations with our musical director, who I'd worked with before, um, and uh, the uh, American supervisor teams who were, mm. who were com coming over here. Yeah. And they, we had very long conversations about it. They, they were great. They were really, really uh, lovely to work with because they were, although the show has has existed in smaller forms mm -hmm. they were they would they're really bringing out a bespoke version for for london okay and they were very keen uh to we, they discussed lots of tunings yeah. uh, with me so all the all the 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 pad has been written for the tunings i wanted to use yeah. which is such a luxury to have mm -hmm. to, to not walk in on the first day and be fighting yeah or having to having to suffer through what someone else was, was handy for someone else. Yeah, sure. Um, so a, a very common thing in this situation would be to Chicago tuning everything. Yeah. Um, and to put the bazooki so that it was tuned like a guitar, have the oud tuned like a guitar, mm -hmm. um, or, have, or have them tuned like themselves, but then have the part yeah. transposed as if it's a guitar, yeah. which I find more confusing, especially mm -hmm. if, like, if the bazooki breaks, let's say mm -hmm. the neck snaps on it, mm -hmm. I can pick up the 12 string and the yeah. part's still in concert pitch. Right. Okay. Yeah. If the oud breaks, I can pick up the nylon string, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, and it's I'm just reading music. Yeah. I'm not reading a part that's been made sure. so that I can get through yeah. the part. So we we had all these sorts of conversations, um, and then and there was just a there was a period of a month or two I think before this really kicked off. Yeah. And, um, they'd send over the old part and just say you know how's, how's this looking mm. and and I was busy creating my musical den at home of just getting all these instruments together yeah. and making sure that I really mm -hmm. really knew what I was doing because I've, I've played all these instruments in some form or another right but because this is a collaborative process mm. and they were creating new stuff with it I didn't want to be learning something rote I wasn't able to learn anything rote um, because the past didn't exist yet no <clears throat> right so I, I was spending all this, these two months or so mm. making sure that on the oud, on the bazooki, I could improvise. I had um, a good musical understanding of yeah. the sound world they were wanting to create. So I was listening to a lot of Arabic music. Okay, yeah. Um, and in your diary, it's easy to say, I've got two months off, mm. but you've got to fill that with other work because yes. you've got bills to pay. Mm. So I was busy doing other things. And over Christmas, New Year, and, so on, and then... But I was trying to do all this in my spare mm. time to make sure that when we got there for the band calls and they put everything in front of us... You could get near it. I, I looked like I was a professional. Yeah. Who, well, you know. I mean, on that note, I mean, can I ask um, how sort of familiar with other tunings, particularly being tuned in fifths, <laughs> like the bazooki, um, you, you have been previously? Because this is uh, um, a tuning that I'm not comfortable with, even though I own a mandolin. But, you know, it's, it's, it's never, it was never anything that I spent any time with because I when I was younger I didn't know that it might come useful no so I mean what's your background with with dealing with different tunings right well um, I'd never started on violin 
mm-hmm. or any of those, which would have been really helpful. Because a lot uh, of people did, didn't they? Yes. We know a few guitarists who have played violin in the past, yeah. for sure. Uh, so I had none of that. I was a, I was a woodwind player uh, yep. beforehand. And uh, mm. so with uh, when, I, when I moved to London, I started getting a bit of work that involved a bit of mandolin. Right. And because it was easy enough, I just thought, I'll keep it tuned like a mandolin because mm. I prefer the sound of it. You know, it sounds like a mandolin. If yeah. you tune it like a guitar, it sounds like a pretty wimpy... Yeah. Um, There's something about the voicings and the intervals that lend, <coughs> that lend themselves to this, the general texture that you'd be creating. Yes, think, yeah. abso- fun, fun enough, when you play it and tune it like itself, it sounds like itself. Exactly, it's, yeah. Um, who, who'd have thunk it? Yeah. And, um, and, of course, all mandolin music is written for a mandolin tune like that. Mm-hmm. And the scale length... If you tune it in force, it's actually really unwieldy to play. Yes. Fifths I, I, works. Yeah. yeah, you're right. On that. <clears throat> Fifths doesn't work quite so well on a No, bazooki. because we've got such a long scale length here, haven't we? Yeah. And as much as I like to say I have you um, hulking hands, I have tiny hands, and mm-hmm. um, it, it does create its own chance. But I've been playing mandolin for, for years, mm. um, and, and then, that lent, then I ended up doing some work on, bazooki, uh, on Irish bazooki, right. uh, which I'm quite familiar with. And so it was the sort of thing that was always on the back burner. I wasn't, I, I took it seriously enough when I had work on it, but not so much that I was yeah. waking up every day and... But at and least play. it meant you had like a working knowledge of typical voicings. Yes. And I could read, I could read And you could visualise the fretboard, which yes. if you're unfamiliar with tuning on any new instrument, even if you're a reader, mm. the visualisation thing becomes quite difficult straight away, doesn't it? Yes, it's... Um, with with those tunings and with classical guitar, any of those, any of those sorts of instruments. Because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm primarily an electric guitarist. I should yes, which I knew, <laughs> and, and I know that that John is a very fine electric guitar player. As, and as my Iron Maiden T-shirt underneath yes, my, indeed, my pitch yeah. clothes will yes. indicate. Um, so I was coming from that that background yeah. originally. So these instruments are the first thing to go if I don't play them. Yeah, sure. If I'm not playing classical every day, mm. I suddenly can't make a sound on them. Yeah, um, mandolin. I, I have to. I have to be doing doing a lot just yeah, to sure. keep keep it keep it fresh. Um, but also, I'm probably getting less disciplined as I age horribly. That um, I'm not doing. I'm not waking up every day and doing a routine of half an hour of flamenco, half an hour of classical mandolin, half an hour of bluegrass. Or, which I can't remember. I'm, I can't remember ever doing that myself. No, but no. I think I think I've created a, an idealised backstory for myself. I, I, I didn't do it either. But because <laughs> um, I know Dave Weckles talked a lot about his practice being divided into um, your, your mechanical practice okay, of your, right. your maintaining, your maintaining yeah. mm-hmm. your basic skill set, and then you've got development of the art, the stuff that really pushes you as a as a musician. Yeah. Um, and these days, I'm much more. If I have time to practice, I want to be really enjoying it. And so for, for me, it's more about sort of tone production and mm-hmm. learning new stuff. It's not just basically a case of drilling your technique. You want to be able to turn up in musical situations and make music. That's essentially what you're aiming Ideally, for. Ideally, of course, I wish I would spend enough time working on my tremolo technique on classical so mm-hmm. that I could just have this yeah, sure. facility. But of course, if you're alternating between all these instruments mm-hmm. all the time, you have to be kind to yourself occasionally. Yep. Just go, you, there aren't enough hours in the day to specialise in everything. Mm. So, and you have to get your laundry done occasionally. Yes, <laughs> yes, occasionally. It's, occasionally. it's a sad fact. And then we're getting some extra noises coming in here. Yes. Surround rear left, surround rear right. SFX spot one. This was bound to happen. SFX spot three. I might leave this in the video. They're, they're checking stuff because we're in between shows. Every so. every gig is Spinal Tap. Every every gig is Spinal Tap. This is true. Yeah. 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 Um, and um, actually, that the first piece I learned on mandolin was Stonehenge. Right. Okay. Yeah. Why, why not? Why not? Absolutely. No one knew who I was or what I was doing. But I learned Stonehenge anyway. Um, so yes, um, with the um, with all these, I I've had enough of a background mm. playing in a lot of theatre shows where you you need to pick up a banjo and yeah. um, not smash it or. Um, <laughs> Or, or anything, and so you you end up just having because they're generally under quite high pressure environments. Yeah, you get quite good at segmenting your brain enough to just quickly mm-hmm. pick something up and do something. What I'm always working on is just trying to make the instrument sound good, so I don't sound like a guitarist who is playing a mandolin. Right. Yeah. Um, 
I don't want to sound like um, I'm not treating the instrument with the respect it deserves. Mm. I'd always, I'd, I understand that I can't redefine my entire history with an instrument and mm. suddenly become this mandolinist who's been playing since he was four. Mm. Yeah, but I do try and just try and make sure that even if my facility on the instrument is limited because I've only been playing electric guitar for mm. for years, I'm making sure that what I can play on the instrument sounds congruous and yeah. will fit in with whatever musical ensemble I find myself in. Mm -hmm. um, that's especially true with classical guitar, actually. Even if you don't if you don't have classical guitar chops, and because it is a scary world and it's not my background as yeah. a player at all. Um, it's something that you have to really, you, you can make it easier for yourself, but it's, it's much easier if you work on your tone production first. Like if you can get a mm -hmm. nice sound on the instrument yeah. where a note will sound good. It's amazing how that can get overlooked, isn't it? Make, making yes. a decent sound. I mean, I've, um, I did do classical guitar when I was mm. younger, um, and I was by no means a classical specialist. Uh, I don't really know what I was. I was a bit of a jack of all trades, sure. to be honest with you. But I think one of the things that I've, kept in mind possibly subconsciously was you know trying to get the, th the thing to sound all right um, and I think when I play nylon now which isn't you know I don't pick it up and practice it every day sure. but when I do I notice that you know I'm listening out that's the thing listening yes. is the key isn't it listening to what sound you're making and whether you're playing finger style or plectrum style because sometimes you have to play with a plectrum yes. on the nylon for, for depending on the music that you're playing absolutely um, but it's possible to make both those techniques sound lovely, and it's possible to make both those techniques sound dire as well. So, yeah. I mean, we know try, try both ways. See how you propose. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, Pat Metheny has got his own his own nylon string sound, oh, which it's is gorgeous, which yeah. is it's not it's not a traditional nylon sound by any means, no. but he's got a sound that really speaks. It's oh. got it's got a tone and a voice. He's created it? his own world of that, and it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It would sound <clears> weird if I did that, but. Um, We've, we've all got our, we've all got our own voice, though, haven't we? And I think we've got to find yes. a way of just letting letting that through. Yes, but but actually, on on, on that note, speaking of which, the amount of time I spend on with different picks okay. is quite troubling. Yeah, actually, that's big, that the biggest um, the biggest change in your sound, on, especially on an acoustic instrument, mm -hmm. is the type of pick you use. So I mean, you'll have seen when you're watching the show. Yeah. I was changing pick a lot, mm -hmm. depending on whether it was a big strummy pattern. I, I did notice and, you yes. were doing that. Um, but it's it's. It, I don't hide it. I wasn't I, surprised no. to notice it. I mean, uh, when I was I was telling you about this bit of recording I did the other day. Yes. And um, it was like, oh, well, which plectrum shall I use? And I ended up using the the expensive one. Oh, yes. The brown one. What they called the blue chip. Yes, which was I was using. Yes. Which I was using today. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Which you know ha doesn't have as much abrasion, does it? So. It's quite handy if you're trying to it get it. It does on the wallet, but not. Well, that's, that's right. Maybe For, not so much on the ears. Fortunately, that was a, a Christmas present from my wife about three years ago. Um, excellent. Right, well, thank you so much, John. This has been um, really enlightening today. Um, Absolute pleasure for I've me. learned an awful lot um, because, of course, we're always all learning all the time. And I think um, anybody who thinks they've completed music by a certain point in their life has. Um, <laughs> Led a very sheltered life, I think. So. Congratulations, you yes. have won music. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everybody has enjoyed this as much as I have today. Um, yeah, if you get the uh, chance, come and see the show. I haven't seen it from the front, so I don't know what it looks like, but the score is amazing, the band sounds amazing, and John is uh, properly shredding it down here with all his different instruments. So um, we'll see you next time, and uh, if you like what you've seen, you know the usual drill, subscribe, hit the bell, all that kind of stuff, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.